Welcome folks. Now I hope you saw my introductory video hands-on testing out the new Nikon Z8. As I said in that video, I think it's pretty clear that it is a Mini Z9. That's how it's been marketed and looking at the specifications, it just is. But I know so many of you were looking for a D850 replacement and whilst these guys are, you know, the junior brother to their bigger brother, I wanted to make this joke just because I'm sitting at a drawing board. After six years at the drawing board, what Nikon has come up with is exactly the same resolution as we had on the D850. Didn't really even work as a joke. So I know there's a lot of people who are shooting with the D850 who want to upgrade to mirrorless, didn't want the integrated grip of the Z9, who will be interested in how these two compare. So whilst I get you might have been hoping for 60, 70, 80 megapixels rather than the 45.7, these are the highest res ones on the market that don't have an integrated grip. So let's compare them side by side with comparable F to Z lenses and see how they do in a portrait situation. Now, in some ways it feels like a bit of an unfair comparison because the lenses have improved so much over the years using the 1.4 G lens here. I never found it to be a spectacular lens. So putting it up against the 51.2 is a bit unfair. I do also have the 58 1G, so we'll 1.4 G. So we'll mix that in at some point as well. Out to the glass. Yeah, they, that's good. That's good. Now, the 3D focus on the D850 was really good, but you just can't compare it to. As a portrait photographer, sometimes I get these questions about, oh, you don't really rely on eye autofocus, do you? I don't rely on it, and I can absolutely do a full shoot with. A DSLR or I started with film that was all manual focus so you can do it but in a lot of these situations it's really nice that I can give all of my attention to the model or to the crew that I'm working with and know that the camera is taking care of that one aspect for me there's nothing worse than trying to do 10 things at once and then end up missing the focus slightly this guy also having all of the focus points in that central section of the frame does limit your composition. And if you're shooting at 1.4, focusing and recomposing that, you know, quarter eighth of an inch can be the difference between getting the eye perfectly in focus or getting just behind the eye or a part of the nose. The Z8 corrects all of that with the tracking. It, the autofocus from what I've seen, having shot with you know, over 10,000 frames with it now, the autofocus is as reliable as the Z9, and that's the best as Nikon shooters we've ever had. If you are in the Nikon Z system, check out my expert setup guide. I've got a link below. It's already been updated for the Z8. It takes you through the Z8 and every single camera in the system, all of the physical controls, how to use them, what the different options give you, and a full run through of the menu, every single option, what you can do with it, in what instance you might want to use it, and it includes all the latest features of the Z8 as well. Full details below. So look, I've been a Nikon shooter for over a decade. The D850 would be my all-time DSLR. Um, I have to say though, once you get used to shooting with the mirrorless cameras, especially the Z9 and now the Z8, the limitations just become glaringly obvious. Apart from being slower and louder, I mean, and with the lenses heavier, the big thing, and I've mentioned this before, but the ability for these ones to focus and track so nicely, but to not be limited to those central points, I don't know, it feels like I have one hand tied behind my back when I'm shooting with this. So I'll probably keep saying this throughout the video. Yes, you can get the job done with this, but the Z8 makes it so much easier. 
Let's grab some little shots here by the fireplace. We'll again use the 50s, but I'll mix in the 58 mil on F mount as well. I have to say the again as a former seasoned DSLR shooter, not a hater. I was actually probably the last YouTuber to switch to mirrorless. I love the viewfinder. I love everything about DSLR. Switching between them, it's like going back in a time machine. It's, I'm so used to it now, seeing exactly how the image is going to look, knowing everything is framed up perfectly right. You put this up and it's darker, it's duller, the, 3D tracking is jumping around her face, not really able to hold exactly on the eye. So even if the optics were up to it, it's just not going to get exactly what I'm looking for because it's jumping around. Two things jumping out here that users who haven't moved to mirrorless may not see the benefit of yet. On all these cameras like the D850 and the D5 and all of those things, as well as having all the points right in the center or close to the center, the central points, the most central ones were cross type and then the extra points you had were less powerful essentially. The new cameras, whilst you have autofocus points all the way to the edge, they're also all equally powerful. So right now I'm trying to frame up Katie completely backlit with her eye in the top right quadrant or even smaller area of the frame. And I can barely get a point on her with the D850 and it's just hunting back and forward, back and forward. It can't get her. If I move to using one of my central points, yeah, it gets her straight away, but then I need to recompose down here and there is no point on her eye. So you couldn't then 3D track from there because her eye is out of the focus area. So that's one big difference. The other one is, and we mentioned this, but seeing the live preview, if you've never used a mirrorless camera to appreciate the difference, in a scene like this, I can't see her face on the D850 when I'm taking the shot. So I can't give her feedback of, is that a good smile? Is there hair in your eye? Anything like that because she's a silhouette literally through the viewfinder. On this guy, because I'm metering the whole scene and I'm setting my exposure, I've got her face where I want it to be and the window's blown out, I can see exactly how the image is going to look. So it lets me to be engaged in the shoot in a way that just wasn't possible with a D850 or really any DSLR. of course I want control over my light but sometimes you want to go with what's available or there can be a lot of reasons why adding light to a scene isn't always feasible. So shooting in low light you have the challenge of are you going to be able to focus, can you compose the scene that you want, can you balance the different elements, does the sensor have the dynamic range for that balance of uh, areas of the image and also how are the images going to look if you do need to bump the ISO up. So here down at f1.4 to get an exposure here just with the natural light I'm up at ISO 4000 if I drop it down to like a hundredth of a second with the stabilization of this camera should be fine then I get it down to 1250 I personally don't like being up here but sometimes you just are now as I said the the 850 and the Z8 do share the exact same resolution, but it's not the same sensor. It's not just that this is backside illuminated and stacked and blah, 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 with no mechanical shutter. The actual array for capturing the image is different as well. 
So there's a leap in technology there. So if the only thing you're interested in is resolution, they're the same. If you're interested in image quality or how the images are processed and captured, then they're completely different. Now, just jumping forward guys, we're at another shoot now. I'm shooting to test out the camera with Honey in this Japanese themed suite. So I thought I would get some test shots here for you. With shooting the two cameras side by side like this is something that we don't often get to do, but it really reinforced a couple of the things that I've already mentioned. Being able to see the image through the viewfinder exactly how it's going to come out has so many advantages. Take a scene like this one where it's heavily backlit as well as not being able to really see her face when composing on the D850. Getting the exposure exactly where you want it, you just nail it with the mirrorless, whereas you might end up a third or a half a stop off with the DSLR. And then once you bump that up in post, it's going to degrade your image quality. And whilst yes, you can use the F-mount glass on your Z cameras with the adapter, they work great. You have to look at these cameras as part of their overall system and the Z lenses are so much better. So when you bring perfect exposure, perfect focus and better optics together, your overall image quality on the Z cameras is going to be higher even though the sensor isn't necessarily any better. Take a look at this shot and you can see even the distortion on the 50mm 1.4G is noticeably worse than on the new Z51.2. Sorry if my voiceover sounds a bit like Barry White, I actually caught COVID whilst filming these videos. So look, it's almost not fair making this comparison when the optics are just so different on these. Um, the optics are just like 10 years difference in terms of technology, but then so is the camera pretty much. Um, I know that I'm very happy to be shooting with mirrorless in 2023. If you are still a DSLR shooter and you're on the fence about it, I would really suggest doing them side by side because some of the differences that on paper seem maybe superficial or trivial or don't matter, when you get into certain situations like this where it's really low light, it really does start to make a difference. You may still prefer the optical viewfinder, but you may find that the EVF does really have some benefits for you. So look, I guess it's probably a foregone conclusion. There is a big leap forward in tech here. I really don't see anything that would hold you back from getting and from upgrading from the D850 to the Z8, other than dashed expectations and hopes that you wanted higher res in 2023, which I can understand with other brands having 60 and rumors of 80 megapixel sensors coming out. I can see why people were, who were waiting for a high res alternative might not want to up, upgrade to a camera that has the same resolution. But I can tell you in every other way for, especially for portrait work, the Z8 is just miles and miles ahead. Thank you so much for joining us today. You can see Katie's Instagram below and what is becoming a tradition, we now need a song. So, what's it going to be? It's uh, called Traitor. Yeah. Confident. <laughs> Let's uh, slide this onto your back pocket. I only know how to sing, okay? It's called Traitor. Like Something that. like that. Okay. Brown guilty eyes and Little white lines, yeah, I played them, but I always knew To talk to her, maybe did even worse I keep quiet so I could keep you and Ain't it funny how you read her The second that we call it quits And ain't it funny how you said you were friends Now it's shoeless How it don't look like You betrayed me I know that 
you never feel sorry The way I heard, yeah, how you talk to her And you didn't matter, yes, you didn't hurt But that didn't matter, it took you two weeks To go off and date her, guess you didn't cheat You're still a traitor Yay! Easy. Simple <laughs> backup dancer, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I request it. Anytime. When you make nice a job. Week, I want to go on tour. Nice job. <laughs>